Good day. My name is Peter Bushell. I am your specialist on occupational health and safety. And as part of the induction program, I shall be walking through with you each of the following slides. Thank you. Second of seven recordings for ISO 45001 2018. Scope of an occupational health and safety management system. One of the first things that we look at is how to plan, do, check and act to ensure that ISO 45001 management system is up to standard. Safety philosophy. Place these facts into one's memory bank. Nine out of ten incidents are preventable. Incidents don't happen. They are caused. The cause of eight out of every ten incidents are by human failure and not mechanical failure. Incidents don't only happen to other people. Working places. Examination of working places. A. A competent person designated by the operator shall examine each working place at least once each shift for conditions which may adversely affect safety or health. The operator shall promptly initiate appropriate action to correct such conditions. B. A record that such examinations were conducted shall be kept by the operator for a period of one year and shall be made available for review by the secretary or his authorised representative. Sustainable Contribution Directive Principles Adopt a corporate culture that uplifts individual creativity and teamwork enrichment while honouring mutual respect and trust of all players. We strive to provide fair working environment where maintaining a safe and healthy workplace for all players. Wherever we do business, we promote, engage, both individually and with strategic partners and in social contribution activities that help strengthen communities. Regardless of hemisphere, we have a vision. Being the safest manufacturer and or service provider within this hemisphere. Our mission ensuring safe equipment and process design, developing world-class safety management systems, creating a culture for safety. Our foundations for safety are set in concrete. Health. Is your health up to the long haul? Look after your body and mind as it will take care of you. When were your eyes last checked? Vision is a necessity. Never ignore telltale signs. Examples, blurred vision. Do you have your teeth checked on a regular basis? Brush frequently, decaying teeth can cause gum disease. Do you have your blood pressure checked annually? Blood pressure is a treatable, but if left to run out of control, can cause harm. Are you frequently saying, pardon or excuse me, what did you say? Possibilities are, you may have a hearing problem. A hearing check is required. Health continued. How often do you work out? Exercise routines contribute to healthy mind and body. Are you eating sensibly? 
Nutrition from a balanced meal can make a difference. Do you indulge in smoking, drinking, etc. on a frequent basis? The consequences are damaging to one's health, both long or short term. Does gambling on cards, casino, horses, etc. get to you? It is a disease which can affect one's health. Is water a reliable source? If in doubt, do not use, especially from streams or rivers. Tool safety. Are flat open end spanners in best condition? No rounded open ends as a spanner may slip when tightening or loosening a nut or bolt. Is a wrench in good working order? Ensure the grip area, the teeth, is not flattened or worn to cause the wrench to slip while tightening or loosening objects. Replace the above, dependent upon condition. Tool safety continued. Are hammers in good condition? Hammers come in different shapes, weights and sizes. Ensure the flat head shapes have no mushroom edges that could have splits. Hammers with clawed ends should have no cracks, chips or broken parts. Ensure handle grips are secure. Handle shaft is in a good condition. Hammer head is securely attached to the shaft stroke handle. Replace dependent upon condition. Tool safety continued. The five steps to tool safety. Step one, check your tools regularly for wear and damage. Step two, use the correct tool for the job. Step three, keep your tools clean and in good condition. Step four, use appropriate safety equipment. And step five, keep hands clear of moving parts. Are screwdrivers in good condition? Each screwdriver comes in various sizes, lengths and shapes. More importantly is the condition of the tip end known as flat, star, square and special heads for various industries. Ensure that damaged edges including being rounded or chipped are not apparent upon visual inspection. Visually check each handle for splitting, mushrooming, splintering etc. Replace dependent upon condition. Tool safety continued. Why the need for checking drill bits and cutters? Blunt drill bits and cutters are non-productive, dangerous to use, extra pressure to drill or cut, easier to break, not accurate when sizing a hole or facing or slitting. Resharpen. Tool safety continued. Are chisels in good condition? The handle is to be splinter free. The handle is to be mushroom free. The handle is to be split free. The steel shank of the blade must be rigid within the handle, not loose. The blade edge must not have nicks. The blade edge must not be blunt. The blade cutting edge must be kept sharp. The blade edge must have a sheath when not in use for protection and safety. Tool safety continued. Hand tools. One, small tools should be used only for the purposes for which they are designed and should be inspected regularly for defects. 
2. Files must be used with handles. 3. Tools must be in good condition before being put to use. 4. Non-sparking tools must be used when explosive or inflammable materials are present. 5. Never strike hardened steel with a hammer. 6. Never leave tools on top of any equipment or machine. Tool safety continued. Rules for tools. Right for the job. Good condition. Not homemade. Not repaired. Used correctly. Stored properly. Don't be a fool. Use the right tool. Tools don't cause accidents, it's the people who use them. Use the correct tool for the job. Tool safety continued. Are G-clamps in good condition? Check that the clamps has not been over-tightened as the frame will be bent and ineffective. The thinnest part of the frame is where the threaded shaft passes through the casting. Check this area as cracks can appear. The threaded shaft needs to be checked as welding spatter can stop the threaded shaft from tightening the clamp properly. Both anvils on the clamp and threaded shaft should be clear of spatter or damage. Physical damage can occur that makes the clamp ineffective. Tool safety continued. Some tools are irreplaceable. Protect your hands so they last a lifetime. Are pliers in good condition? What type of pliers do we refer to? Square, long, short, side cutters, etc. Ensure grip insulation on the handles are without splits. Never loose or have tears. There should be no or little damage to the anvils. Check no spatter or foreign body is causing a gap between the anvils. Side cutters usually have a sharp check edge for snipping wire, cable etc. Equipment safety. Are ladders visually checked? Type of ladders may include fixed, extension, folding, step etc. Various types of ladders require that the runs are fixed and firm without movement. Hinges on folding ladders must be anchored properly and unobstructed for opening and or closing. Footings for each set of ladders must be in good condition without being loose. Unsafe ladders must either be repaired or disposed of. Equipment safety continued. Ladders continued. 1. When working in high, unguarded places, wear a safety harness properly secured to prevent falling. 2. Before using a ladder, see that it is fitted with safety shoes and is free from cracks and broken rungs. 3. When placing a ladder, have the bottom away from the wall or building approximately a quarter of the length of the ladder. 4. Never use a ladder too long or too short for the job. 5. Always have someone stand at the bottom of the ladder to support it. Equipment safety continued. Ladders continued. 6. If possible, always secure the top of the ladder. 7. When climbing up or down a ladder, use both hands.
Do not have hands loaded with tools. Use a proper hand line for materials and tools. 8. Do not work with another employee on the same ladder. 9. Never use makeshift or defective scaffolding. 10. All pits, excavations and manholes must be suitably protected to prevent people falling in. Equipment safety continued. Are scaffolds maintained and checked? Uneven ground requires that wooden spaces be used for levelling purposes. Wooden spaces should be wide, long or thick enough to support the weight of the scaffolding at its maximum working height. Scaffold footings should be as flat as possible with female tubing at 90 degrees ready to accept male scaffolding upright poles and located onto spacer boards. These must be free of damage, being bent, not being at 90 degrees, rust beyond repair or pinholes that could weaken and damage a pole. Scaffold clamps should be free of damage or excessive wear and tear. Kickboards must be free of rot if wood is used or rust that may have eaten through if metal. You have just listened to one of seven recordings on an induction program for occupational health and safety, specifically on ISO 45001 2018. Should you require further assistance, please call me, email me, look at my website or even invite me to your organisation.